Today, I want to provide a solution to all of the world's problems in approximately 10 minutes. As insane and unrealistic as that sounds, I do think this exercise has value. I believe it's possible to quantify all of the world's problems and develop a systematic approach for tackling them. And that's exactly what I've decided to do with my life. As it stands today, I believe there are seven broadly comprehensive problems plaguing the world. And most other issues fall into one of these categories. These problems are as follows. Socioeconomic inequality, food slash water scarcity, climate destruction, lack of access to education, lack of access to robust health care, identity-based inequity, and crime in its various forms. Now, as you'll mentally review this list, you'll come to the conclusion that some, if not all of these issues, seem insurmountable. We as a society can accept that we might be able to make linear progress in addressing some of these issues, but we'll never be able to eradicate them in their entirety. Just take one of these issues, crime. How does one eradicate crime? Sure, we may be able to implement societal measures that lower the occurrence of criminal behavior, but it's inevitable that at some point, someone will do something malicious. It's human nature, and no matter how perfect a system is, there are bound to be a few bad apples. Such is the case with most major societal problems. No matter how much we improve upon them, there always exist instances of failure. The tremendous scale and magnitude of most major world problems prevent us from tackling them in any meaningful way. As such, we as a society have abandoned the idea of radical change and slipped into the realm of incremental improvement in the areas of social, economic, and political change. We've accepted that the vast intricacies of these systems and their current consequences are indomitable, and that better is the best we can do. But this doesn't have to be the case. Today, I want to present you a framework to universally tackle world problems. And it's quite simple. I believe the best way to eradicate world problems is through large-scale, non-incremental thinking. Similarly to how you can't create a light bulb by trying to build a better candle, we can't create a society rid of the problems we currently face by trying to marginally improve it using existing solutions. We must think radically and do so in a way that yields radical, large-scale solutions that are A, driven by the value of being effective, and B, scalable through a technological underpinning. I'll begin by addressing the first part of this framework, valuing effectiveness. I believe most people are fundamentally altruistic. This is not just a belief of mine, but rather a scientific fact, as various anthropology studies have proven cooperative behavior to be key to evolutionary development. We thrive by helping others and generally want to do good. However, I also believe that being altruistic in itself isn't enough unless it also yields the best results possible. This is the idea behind effective altruism, a philosophy that advocates for doing the most good possible in the most effective ways possible with an emphasis on scale. But this is quite contrary to how we often deal with issues in society today. Earlier, I brought up crime as an unsolvable universal problem. Solutions to crime today often take shape in the form of protests about violent occurrences or public policy surrounding law enforcement. And while these are well-intentioned efforts from altruistically-minded individuals, they will only help in the interim and do very little to eradicate crime as a problem for humanity. But what if we took a different approach to develop a radical solution that could both effectively and holistically address the issue? Let's take a moment to talk about A Clockwork Orange, a thought-provoking Stanley Kubrick classic that follows the story of a violent criminal who is given a treatment that limits his ability to commit crime completely. Though this was considered science fiction at the time, we may soon have the technology to do so within the coming decades. 
through our use of machine-to-brain interfaces being developed by neurotech startups and advanced artificial intelligence capable of discerning malicious thoughts, we may be soon able to build a system in which, through the use of technology, we may be able to both detect and subsequently prevent crime before it ever even happens. Now, I'd reckon most people would consider this to be dystopian. But the case can be made that giving away our autonomy to do harm is a small price to pay for a society that is absolutely free of violence and crime. As such, a long-term driven effective altruist may argue that if one were truly interested in eradicating crime, they'd be best served to either pursue a career in the field of AI or contribute to scientific organizations dealing with such breakthroughs. The tenets and approaches of effective altruism vary drastically depending on scope and time frame, but its central principle is quite simple. Do good things effectively with as much scale as possible. Effective altruism also forces us to prioritize the collective, to not let our personal grievances and objections prevent us from doing what yields the most benefit for society. Effective altruism is paramount in thinking radically, and I believe it's imperative for us to adopt this approach if we are to tackle the problems we face in a manner that is tangibly effective in the long term, rather than just ideologically pleasing today. The second part of this large-scale thinking framework entails technology, which I believe is the underlying element of scalability. Technology is the missing element from our current discourse on how to solve societal problems. Instead, we often opt for political solutions which lack scale. This is best seen in regards to the rather pressing issue of climate destruction and one of its biggest components, climate change, a global existential problem that affects each and every one of us. Yet the best we've been able to do is convince an insignificant percentage of the population to make more eco-conscious choices and put in place regulations that are negligible relative to the scope of the problem. But what if we used the framework we discussed to tackle climate change? To start, we would need to prioritize our value of being effective. This means focusing only on truly large-scale solutions that can actually make a difference. The second part would entail what we just discussed, adding a radical technological element to the mix that could enable massive scalability. This is something tech startups uniquely understand. What allows tech startups to be disruptive is that they use technology as a means to scale. Various tech startups in Silicon Valley have already started working on geoengineering-related technologies. Geoengineering is a field dedicated to the large-scale intervention of our atmosphere to counteract the effects of climate change. Its proposed solutions range from machines that suck CO2 out of the atmosphere to building structures in outer space to deflect sunlight and drop the temperature of the planet. Now, I understand the hesitation that comes with technological solutions. That intuition is part of why people are so fundamentally dismissive of technology. But the alternative is that we continue with solutions that are only incrementally effective. And by the time they make enough of a difference to actually matter, it would already be too late. I want to make it clear that the responsibility of utilizing technology shouldn't solely lie in the hands of Silicon Valley tech startups, or even the private sector in general. It's an approach that world governments and social institutions should adopt, as they're the ones directly in charge of solving societal problems. As we look to the future, it's important for us to be bold, to make bold bets on radical solutions that prioritize effectiveness and are scalable with their technological underpinning. We shouldn't just try to vaguely make the world a better place, but instead ask ourselves what we can do to reinvent society into something beyond what it is today. And while we ought to fix the problems we face here, we will soon be confronted with new frontiers. From floating ocean cities to space colonization, we'll have plenty of opportunities to think radically and employ technology to build a society rid of the problems we currently face. We just have to be 
bold enough to try. Thank you.